Key tracking is a very common modulator that you find on synthesizers uh, because, again, it responds to where a note is pressed. Is this note pressed down low? Is it pressed up high? Is it pressed somewhere in the middle? And how is that then going to influence some kind of a parameter? Inside of the polysynth, we do have one control that is already uh, set to be key tracking, and that would be the filter frequency. And so if I bring up the range on this, and let's start actually with a down at zero, and I play some different octaves. If I play down way low, I start to go up. What you hear as we go higher is that we cut off more and more of the sound. And so if I'm playing a fundamental that's above D5, we're going to be missing quite a bit of that because it's all cut off. So what we really want to have happen is that as I go lower, we'd want this to slightly go down. As I go higher, we'd want to open this up. And that's what key tracking does. So it gives more of a smooth playing field if you're playing across a lot of different octaves. And so let's just go and bring this up to 100% right now. We're going to hit the same key we just pressed before, and you're going to hear just how much more sound you get as compared to if I bring this down a couple octaves into a more, you know, manageable range for your hearing. Hear how dull it is and how bright it is. And then when we go down and play something really low, what you're actually going to hear is that it's duller. Right, you hear more of those higher overtones coming in. And so this is then nice if we're playing things. Let's say I just have this holding down. It works out quite nicely there. Uh, and obviously, I can't just go ahead and I can set this up from within the instrument, but I'll show you how this would work from the actual modulator side of things. And we'll see immediately we have two different modes. We have absolute and we have relative. If you want to work with traditional key tracking, you might as well just leave it in absolute and not even really touch anything. Um, because what we have here is kind of like this line going down the middle. And that's going to then determine, does the parameter move up or does it move down? So something like filter frequency, where you would want it to potentially move down, this works out great. So if I go in here and I increase the range, and we'll go drastic with it just so you can really see how this works. When I hit a note and I hit a note that's in the middle, let's go up one octave. It's not going to move a whole lot. But then the further away I go from that middle point, it's going to either open up more or close down more. So let's keep going up octaves. And now let's do the same thing going down. So you can see how that's working. The issue arises when if you want to control something that's like not bipolar, like sync, you probably are going to want to work in the relative mode. You could use this absolute mode. And what you could then do would be to just go up like this and kind of bring all of these up. And you can, of course, kind of change the curves on these things. So if you really don't want too much sync happening in this sort of range from note 24 up to note 60, you'd be good to go. And then if you want sort of a drastic increase from 60 to 72, you could do that and then have it come back down again in different octaves. We can watch and see how this is going to work. Let's clear it out of filter frequency and instead let's route it to the sync control. In this case, it should always be applying some sync. If this was all the way down at the bottom and we played something very low, it's not going to make a difference to the sound. It's going to be trying to go further down, and it's already at zero. So now, as I go up octaves, and keep in mind, this is polyphonic. And now in the next octave, it's going to be a big jump. So again, this would work nicely if I'm playing something down here, and I go up then. down one more octave.
like so. But then you also do have the option to go into relative where you're not going to be working with five points. Instead, you're basically just working with two. And this root position here determines when it starts going above and when it starts going below. But the nice thing with this is that we can adjust that. So for example, we could actually have the root be all the way down here to like the lowest note you were going to play and then we could increase the spread amount and that way we would be able to keep it always sort of going on this upward slope if we were to have this controlling something like sync let's actually add some of that filter key tracking If you want to set up the pitch shifter to work on an audio source, you can do that. The issue here is that you're probably going to get a lot of clicks. Well, it really does depend on, you know, the effect you're working with. But in this case, I have the key tracking going on to the pitch shifter. You see we have our note receiver coming in here from instrument number three. And so as I play through, I will be able to jump to different locations there. And let's just see what is our range here. We should probably go in here and actually set this all the way up to like 12 and then increase the spread to the maximum amount and then we should I would think be jumping through the different semitones I'm not 100% sure if that's how that's going to work but maybe who knows let's just play it out and listen to it What would be kind of cool is that we actually then could go in and like put an arpeggiator on here. This is going to be sheer madness. And again, this may not be the greatest example in the world, just based on using like the pitch shifter as we are getting a lot of like clicks and pops in there. Um, but you could experiment with other sort of effects and just sort of see the results that you come up with. All right, there you go.